Hey family, thank you all so much for tuning in. I pray you're well. I'm excited to see you guys and to share this word with y'all today. Listen, I'm not gonna act like I haven't been away for almost two weeks. That was not my intention. I tried to actually get a word out on Friday, but time just did not permit. I've been so busy. My son is here this summer and he plays basketball for AAU. So we were traveling over the weekend and then I'm also working on restructuring some things with my business and ministry. So I've been pressing in diligently trying to meet those deadlines so that I can relaunch some things and, and show you guys what I've been working on. So anyway, I appreciate each and every one of you, those of you who pray for me and pray for us, but all is well. So thank you so much. I know that's not like me to not come on um, in that span of time. So thank you guys. Everything is well. So listen, I got a word that I'm going to share today that the Lord gave me this morning. What I was trying to release Friday, I'm going to hold on to that because I feel there's more to it. And maybe that's why the Lord didn't allow it to all come out as I was trying to fit it in my schedule. So anyway, this word today is for those of you who are moving forward into this new season. And you're not going to want to hear this because you already have been warring, right, for um, the next thing that God is doing in your life. But there's another battle, right? Like just as Joshua brought the children of Israel over to Jericho, the promised land, right? They still had to go and fight another battle, which I think that next battle was AI. And so this is what the Lord was showing me this morning. Everything that you have rejected, meaning the will of God, because you've gotten weary, you've gotten tired, maybe um, it was too much for you, right? Like after the spoils of the first war, meaning those of you who are operating in your purpose and you're getting the influence, the impact, you're making a difference, like you are making your footprints in the kingdom of God, in your sphere of influence, but it's just been a lot, right? And so God is saying that some of you almost kind of backed away from that because of the mantle. Thank you, Lord. The heaviness of the mantle, the responsibility of the call, okay? And so God is saying everything that you rejected as you gear up for this next battle, he's going to re-inject you with everything that you rejected. So he's like powering you up. And so let me pray before I get into this word, but it is so good. It is such a now word. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. I ask that it be all of you and none of me, and that it be seed planted in the hearts, minds, and spirits of your people. I ask that you give me a fresher anointing and revelation as I release it today. Father God, I thank you for showing us your plans and your purpose for our lives, Lord God. I thank you for strengthening us. I thank you for the increase that is coming. I thank you for this mass deliverance that you are doing, Lord God, in this season. I thank you that the nets are breaking from the harvest that is coming in for your people, the harvest of souls first and foremost, and then the harvest of spoils from the war. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I ask that you just touch them all in their spirit womb. Let it be an impartation of what it is that you're filling me up with right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. So listen, as I was spending time with the Lord this morning, in a vision, he showed me this old fashioned lamp and it was being relit. And immediately I was brought to Matthew 25, where it speaks about the five wise and the five foolish virgins who did not have the oil for their lamps, who slept and slumbered, right? And this is what God is saying in that re-injection, right? Like what you rejected, he's re-injecting you. So I saw these lamps being relit and I heard the sound of the fire coming on in the lamps. It sounded like if you would relight a pilot on a gas stove. So it was like, and I saw the lights coming on, right? And then from there, the vision shifted and I saw a multitude of God's people with their lamps extended in their hands and they were standing at the border of their promised land. This is what I knew it was, right? So there was like a multitude and they were like this with their lamps, right? And so as I'm looking into this vision, I'm thinking, Lord, what is this? What are you showing me? And the Lord said, these are my saints. 
and they're ready to enter in. And so the way that I saw the vision, it was like the people were standing in this marsh, like marshy land, like it was almost like soot, right? Like it was a fire on the land, right? And so, yes, this is you as you have defeated that first battle, right? So, you, you, my God. And so it's almost like you still have on your battle garments in this case, right? I remember, and I'm reminded right now of a word that I did where God was um, asking some of you to take off your battle stained clothes, right? Because it was your time to come out of that season. But some of you, it's been a continual season of battles. Come on, Holy Spirit. Again, just like the Jericho battle, and then there was a little rest, and then the AI battle. And after that came the renewing of the covenant, right? And so this is what God is doing right now in your life in this season. And so as I'm looking into this vision, again, the ground was like soot, like mud. And the Lord says, this is the residue from the battle of the previous season that caused their lights to dim and for some to go out. So this is weariness. or some of you trying to pretty much give up altogether. You have given up altogether. And God is saying, no, renew your covenant with me. Come back into agreement with me. I'm going to carry you through this next battle. Yes, you will receive the spoils of the war. Yes, you will have a time of rest. Yes, there will be a redemption, a restoration after that, right? So he's saying, get back to work because something is about to break loose in the spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He needs you on guard. He needs you on the front lines where he has called you. And so as I'm looking into this vision, I'm wondering why it's dark in the vision. So I'm thinking if the saints are at the border of their promised land and they're ready to enter in, I would think like this is a joyous occasion, like it should be light. Like, why is this ground looking like this? Why is it so murky? Like, why is it looking like this? Right. And so the spirit of the Lord says, these are the ones that I am sending on assignment into the dark places of the earth to bring in my light. And so you have a mandate from the Lord to be the light where he sends you. We all do as believers, right? As followers of Christ. But he's saying where he is sending you, come on, Holy Spirit, it's an uncommon assignment. It is something that you didn't even think he was going to do. Like your mindset was somewhere else with the things that God showed you that he was about to do in your life. Like you pictured it being one way, there it is, but it's a totally different way. Like it's taking you by surprise where he is sending you or the doors he has opened up for you, okay? A lot of you are about to realize or find out who you really are in Christ, like your identity in Christ, like how bad you really are. Come on, somebody, like how on fire you really are, how much power you really have in Christ. Come on, Lord. And so... This is Isaiah 60 verses one through three, where he says he's taking you on assignment to the dark places of the earth to bring in your light. So uh, verse one says, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. And actually the Lord said this before he began to show me the vision. He said, get ready to launch into deeper depths of my love and my glory. And so, yes, Isaiah 60, this is speaking to that. Verse two says, see, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. And so, yes, you're going to be that light in the darkness of where he is sending you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And so those nations coming to your light are the people, okay? As God sends you in these spheres of influence, as he has opened these unusual doors for you, doors that you didn't even think that you even wanted to go into or even thought that you qualified to enter into, right? God is doing it. And so the Lord says, when they enter in, darkness will flee, which will bring more exposure in the hidden places that I am sending them. So again, these hidden places, the, the unsuspecting places, the assignment that God has you on, what he has you putting your hands to, the rooms he's placing you in, the connections that are coming to you, right? God has a purpose behind it. Yes, many of you, he's connecting. You thought, okay, you thought your connections was all going to be 
churchy churchy right but he's sending you into secular spheres of influence because he is trying to draw in his people from out of there come on somebody arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon you and so as my son cinnamon rolls are done <laughs> and so jordan come get your cinnamon rolls i'm sorry you guys and so <laughs> Okay, so my son did not come get his cinnamon rolls. I had to get up and get them out. All right, before they were like tar, like that, <laughs> before they ended up looking like that ground I saw in the vision, okay? Come on, somebody. All right, so, <laughs> so as I'm looking on this vision, I asked the Lord, what and where are these hidden places? Like, what is this, Lord? And the Lord says, they are whitewashed tombs in my church. As my saints go where I send them, my light will cause deliverance to take place. And so this is twofold. This is the church, the four walls that some of you are being sent into. And then this is also the church, meaning us, like we are the temple of God, like the Lord lives within us. The Holy Spirit is within us. And so specifically to the church, right? Those who are in the four walls, right? This is what the Lord is saying. Matthew 23, 27 through 28. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but are on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. And so the Lord says, I am sweeping my house clean and I am ridding it of fornication and adultery, says the Lord. So I really sense he's speaking of those who are actually um, in the fivefold, right? And so the Lord says, every abomination is coming under my judgment, says the Lord. Every high place that has profaned my name is coming down, says the Lord. And so the Lord says, tell my saints they will persevere. They will leave this battle with the spoils of war increase like they have yet to experience. I will do it, says the Lord. And then I heard gird up to go up. I heard that in the spirit and to gird G I R D means to prepare for action. And so God is saying, as you take action, he will elevate you. He will increase you. This is the increase. So don't be afraid of the assignment. Don't be afraid of where he's sending you. Don't reject the assignment because you think it's supposed to look churchy, churchy, right? God is doing a new thing. He is doing a new thing and he is washing everything clean. Yes, any of you are missing your assignment because you think that it's supposed to be inside of the four walls of the church. And God is saying, no, like don't reject what he's showing you to do in the marketplace outside of the four walls of the church. You are a moving vehicle, meaning a moving ministry, right? Like the book of Acts. Come on, somebody. Your gifts are not just for the four walls. Help me, Holy Spirit. This is why the Lord is highlighting Matthew 23, 27 through 28. And just back to the abominations and the adultery and fornication that God is bringing under judgment. Even that adultery, not just in male and female abomination and uh, fornication, but God is saying just adultery with him, right? Like not submitting to his will, cheating on him is what the Lord is saying. Like he's cleaning all of that up. Thank you, Lord. And so again, don't be afraid of the assignment. This is what you've been praying for in the secret place to do the will of the Lord. And he is using you to bring in this end time harvest and he's going to reward you for it, right? Yes. After the battle, you'll be able to rest. You'll be able to enjoy the spoils of war. But then as you continue to gird up to go up, you're going to always have to fight the enemies at the gate of your greatness, as I always tell you guys. And so the Lord says your lamp is filled with the oil of his anointing to carry out the assignment. So don't again, don't be afraid of it. His anointing is going to do it. His anointing is going to bring the deliverance. All you got to do is walk in the room. All you got to do is be obedient. Thank you, Lord. 
And so his anointing, again, in you will cause the, the deliverance of others. And so a mass deliverance is about to take place and you will lead it in your sphere of influence, right? Again, God is cleaning things up because he needs to usher in some things in the earth. And he cannot do that until it is cleaned up, until his body is cleaned up. I was just um, texting with a dear sister in Christ of mine and God was showing her the same thing. And he just added to that word um, today. So I thank God for the word. But listen, this also may be on a smaller scale, this deliverance, right? So we already been seeing publicly in the church, well-known leaders coming to their time of exposure, right? Um, the cups of iniquity being filled. And God is saying that this is also happening on a smaller scale with people who may not be known, all right? But just know this is the domino effect that I've been speaking about for the last couple of years, where it's from the top down, right? The, the greats down to the smalls, if I can say it that way, but we're all equal in the kingdom of God. But, you know, just on this earth, you have your leaders and you have those who are known, those who are not as known or whatever, like the influence, the impact. And so I have one more point to touch on in the scripture and I'm done. All right. And so I noticed today that the Lord continued to call us his saints. Normally when he speaks to me by his spirit, he'll say my children, my children, my children. Right. And so I noticed that. And the Lord is just reassuring those of you who have this heavy mantle, right? This responsibility to bring in the harvest. Like we all have that responsibility, but some greater than others, right? So God is saying that he just wants to reassure you that you're in right standing with him, like no longer a sinner, but a saint. Even though you got weary, even though you wanted to give up, even though some of you may have given up, right? He's saying, repent, get back in alignment, right? He'll count it to you as righteousness, just as he did with Abraham when he got himself back together and on track, right? And so God is saying you're equipped. You've gone through your process and he's going to use you in such a mighty way, right? He has set you apart for his purpose. And so if you're in self-condemnation, let that go. Don't allow the enemy to, or even the inner you, right? Your mindset, keep you in a place of self-condemning thoughts and not thinking you're good enough or you made a mistake. So you think God can't use you like whatever it is, right? He's saying, let that go in this season because it's go time, right? And if you're in a place where you're abusing his grace, if you're habitually sinning, if you have given up, right? He's saying, repent, repent, come back to him. When Jesus is the Lord of your life, you don't want to do the things you used to do. You don't want to go the places you used to go. And so that position that you're in right now or that funk that you're in right now is just because of a lack of communication with the Lord, meaning in his word, meaning in your prayer time. Maybe you have a hard heart, whatever it is, right? And so I pray that the Lord heals you. I pray that the Lord gives you supernatural strength and his grace to overcome um, what it is that you're struggling with, right? So that you can get back up and move forward. God has wonderful things in store for you. Okay. And so I want to read James 4, 7, which says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And so God is asking you to just rededicate your life, resubmit your life to him, recommit, yes, your ways to him. He's asking you to believe again, right? Counting that to you as righteousness so that you can move forward, no longer condemned, no longer in chains, right? But free to do the will of God. And he has, again, he has wonderful things in store for you. So I pray that this word has blessed your life. Play it back to get it into your spirit. Share with someone if they came to mind. I appreciate each and every one of you for your support. Those of you who are sowing into my life and into the ministry, may the Lord continue to bless you 100, 1,000 fold in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you all so much with the love of Christ. Most importantly, Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you soon.